This is your Other Brothers Podcast. It's like running through an open door. It's like finding what you're looking for. We've been waiting. We won't wait no more. We got a beautiful story. Every moment on and on. We got a beautiful story. And we Welcome home, friends. This is your other brother's podcast. We're a community navigating faith, homosexuality, and masculinity together. From the Jewel of the Blue Ridge, Asheville, North Carolina, my name is Tom, and I'm so glad you're here. Today is such a special day because we only have one place to go. We're going straight to the folksy tundra of Minnesota. Let's start with our other brother, Aaron. Let's give him a first go for the first time, maybe. <laughs> How's it going, Aaron? Hello, it's going well. Good to see you. Do you want to introduce the person sitting literally, I mean, I would say six inches. It may not even be six inches. It might be two inches next to you. Who? Who is that? This is my other brother, Ryan. <laughs> hey everyone, you couldn't get rid of me that easily. <laughs> yeah, people out, people listening are freaking out because they're like, wait, where's the, the city of Oaks? Where, why are we going to the folksy tundra <laughs> so quickly? But never, never fear because our other brother Ryan is in Minnesota. How is it going up there, the two of you guys? We haven't done a good old like podcast where multiples of us are in the same box. That hasn't happened in so long. Hmm. It's been lovely. Uh, it snowed a little bit the other night, and so I woke up and there was snow on the ground, which doesn't happen in North Carolina, every, well, in Raleigh every year. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and yeah, it's just been wonderful spending time with Aaron and his housemate, and both dear friends of mine. So it's been great to see Nice. Him. And I see in your background, we were joking before we started recording, that Aaron, you suddenly, it's not just a beige background anymore. I see shelves. I see board games. Have you guys, have you guys done any board games or any, any fun, fun adventures together yet? We uh, are here for mostly one purpose, and that is to watch through the Wheel of Time series together on Amazon okay, Prime. Okay. And so it came out, I think, a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. and we've been holding off until we could all three be together to watch it. <laughs> That's yeah. so precious. But, but we finished all the available episodes last night, and so I think today will involve some Okay, games. okay, got you. It's funny because you, ha you guys haven't heard the last episode yet because of when we're recording, but The Wheel of Time was referenced on our last episode with Ben oh, wow. and Will, and I've heard about it, but I'm like, I have no idea. What is this? And so it was... A brief synopsis was given to me on the last episode, which listeners can go back and enjoy. But how how has it matched your expectations? Was it did it meet expectations? Not meet expectations? Exceed expectations? You know, I had high expectations, and I think for the most part they've been met. Okay, and and in some cases exceeded. So I'm very pleased so far. And you as you, Aaron, I would agree with that. Yeah, I would agree with that. And I'm only two books. Two books into what is it a 14 or 16 14 book books series oh. so whereas ryan has read through it more than one time so two very different viewers coming to the show but i'd say both of us have really liked it well cool because i know yeah i'm sure i'm sure if this is a snapshot of our community if, if the fact that half of the podcast team last time was invested in this and two thirds of it this time. I'm sure there's a I'm following laws of statistics and probabilities. There must be a decent percentage of our listenership who are also tracking with this book series, Amazon series. So I hope it's going well. I hope it continues to exceed expectations. Better be careful, Tom, or else I'm going to drive over to Asheville and drag you through the series. <laughs> well, you have if you bring it up. One you more have time. a good track record, Ryan, with introducing me things like over the garden wall, and you introduced me to the good place, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Mm -hmm. Like so, I if you if this is Ryan approved, then <laughs> maybe it'll, it's worth a shot. I am very famous for having good taste. <laughs> you <so>. are. <laughs> yes, you are. Um, well, I'm so glad you guys are hanging out. This kind of ties sort of into our episode, even though you guys aren't there for a holiday right now. Although maybe this is a, a, a nerddom holiday that you're celebrating with this series. <laughs> um, today we're talking about Home for the Holidays. And I put a question mark at the end because 
I want to I want to talk about like this concept of spending time with people who aren't your biological family on the holidays. We just celebrated Thanksgiving. A lot of people, myself and Ryan, you included, celebrated a Friendsgiving in lieu of a traditional mm-hmm. family mm-hmm. Thanksgiving. And so I want to dive into this because the older I get and the more single I remain, it, this is something that's becoming more and more of like a conscious thought versus like even as little as two years ago, three years ago, this wasn't something that was on my radar, um, spending holidays with anyone other than my family. So um, so that's what we're going to talk about later today. So you guys can stay tuned. I'm eager to hear what y'all have to say about this topic. Mm-hmm. As we close down 2021, this is the final podcast you guys of 2021 and we have this tradition which i don't know how many years back it goes it's at least one or two maybe three or four i don't know but what i like to do just for a sense of accomplishment a sense of nostalgia i like to look back on the year that was 2021 and dive into our podcast stats a little bit and this has been really fun because it also gives us an opportunity to shout out some of the places not only around the country not even around the continent but around the world people who are listening to your other brother's podcast, the Your Other Brother's Convo cast on this Yab Podcast Network. It's an awesome opportunity to look back on this wonderful year. Cause it was a wonderful year, wasn't it, you guys? Wasn't 2021 the best? Mm, it's better than 2020. <laughs> it was better. Not, not <laughs> by much. <laughs> I was gonna say, if you compare 2021, then it was better. And honestly, from a Yab standpoint, it was better. We um we rose five percent in listenership from 2020, Ooh. so we had slightly more listens this year compared to the previous year, which is always exciting. Um, and what I'd like to do as we start out is go through our most listened countries. This is always a fun little game to play. Um, what do you guys think? We won't spend too long on this, but I want to give you guys an opportunity to play along. What do you guys think our top ten countries? that listen to the Yob Podcast Network in 2021 were? Any any immediate, there's like obvious ones, but then there was a couple on this list that are not obvious, which cracked the top 10 for the first time, which I'm really excited about. Ooh. Well, surely number one is US. US is number one. Number two. Um, is it Brazil by any chance? It is not Brazil. Brazil, you guys did not crack the top 10 this year. We've, really? we've, oh, wow. we've oh. had some Brazilian listenership in the past. I don't know. It, it tailed off this year. It either tailed off or other countries just turned on one, one of those. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a guess? Um, how about the UK? So the UK is holding strong at number three. You guys leapfrogged our dear neighbors to the north. Oh, Canada. Canada. Of, course, yes. of course. So we got course. the US, Canada, UK. Um, from there, it's it gets crazy, y'all. Do you have a, just a couple more guesses of what you think might have rounded out the top 10? Uh, Australia. Australia's number six. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. I really want Sweden to be up Sweden, there. Sweden, number nine. Yes. Yes. We had a yes, spurt yes. in Swedish listenership this year. So shout out to Sweden. I mean, shout out to all the countries, but a particular shout out to Aaron's heritage country. <laughs> That's right. Of Sweden. My people. Your people. My people are Maybe coming. it's because you are on the show. You you debuted on the show this year, Aaron. So maybe they responded. I would like to take credit for that. That's that Swedish listenership. Yeah. That's right. That's... It's all about diversifying the podcast. <laughs> How do we diversify the white people on our show? We will right. go to Europe. We will go to Sweden. Scandinavia, as they call it, right? That's yeah. right. Well, let me give you guys the rest of it. So we have um, number four, Italy. Italy. Mm. Thank you, Italy. We just I just noticed we have an Italian patron. So shout out to the country of Italy. Uh, number five, New Zealand, our little neighbors to Australia. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So those are obvious. Yeah, from here, it gets crazy. Number seven, India. Shout out to India, who's mm. listening. Um, number eight, the Czech Republic, which I just recently learned also goes by Czechia, is another oh, name oh, for it, okay. just to shorten the republic. Yeah, so Czech Republic or Czechia. And then number nine, Sweden. Number 10, Germany. So Germany, very nice. A lot of European representation, which we are grateful for. So thankful to the world. Thank you, world, for listening to Your Other Brother's podcast this year. Um, going to America, no surprises here, our top five states in America were the same exact top five from last year. So number one, California, number two, Texas, number three, Illinois, number four, the handprint of God, Michigan, and then number five, North Carolina. So 
that rounds out our top mm-hmm. five. But what I wanted to focus more on is not the top of the country, but the bottom of the country, because we have a new bottom dweller, you guys. Last year, we had, <laughs> last year we had a tie between West Virginia and Vermont for the least listened to states of our podcast. And I'm happy to say that West Virginia and Vermont both escaped the bottom this year. They are somewhere Ooh. higher up. I didn't check actually where they are, but... Um, any guesses what you guys think the new least listened state? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Who do you want to call out? Uh, uh, Louisiana. No, interesting guess, but no, not Louisiana. Hmm. That was actually going to be my guess as well. Nothing against really? Louisiana. Really? Wow. Well, yeah, I, I was going to say, what do you guys have against Louisiana? I haven't met a yobber from Louisiana. That's yeah, just, exactly. That's true. That's true. Well, if you're going by yobbers, yeah, there is. I don't believe there's currently a yobber from this state. It is a very vast not populated state oh, so there's that alaska it's not alaska that's montana good. no not montana montana's number 48 though and you're in the neighborhood okay you're in the neighborhood wyoming it is wyoming yes <laughs> all right there we go i feel like we've shouted out wyoming the last few years for one reason or another because uh we we did have a spurt in, in wyoming listenership a year or two ago but it's it's since bottomed off so if you're from wyoming if you're listening we need you we want you and for all the other states that matter, our bottom five were Rhode Island, Hawaii, Montana, North Dakota, and finally Wyoming. So those are our bottom five states. So if you guys know anybody from those states, anyone listening, tell them about our show. Get them to listen. Get them to get out of the bottom from that, from next year. Um, and then because Podbean, the, so we're hosted on Podbean. They give me all these stats. And I'm just like, wow, we can get super niche. So I'm going to rattle off both the Canadian and the Australian top five. I don't even know what they're called in Australia. Are they provinces in Australia? Whatever those sectors are. <laughs> I, should, I should have gotten my geog- ge- ge- geographical knowledge set before I rattled these things off. But um, shout out to our top five provinces in Canada, Alberta, my sweet sweet Alberta. The fro- that's the frozen tundra, um, home of Will Cooper. So Alberta, number one, Ontario, number two, British Columbia, number three, Quebec, number four, and a surprise hit, number five, from Newfoundland and Labrador. Shout out to you people <laughs> over there. Uh, we love we love our, our noofs and labs. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Whatever. However y'all identify over there um and then our top five australian thingies whatever y'all are called um (laughs) there there goes our listenership (laughs) number one new south wales number two queensland number three victoria number four western australia and number five south australia which really bothers me just from a from keeping things parallel like why is it called western australia but not southern australia why is it western australia and south australia what is that about Australia, can you explain yourself? One is Western themed, I assume. Right. A lot of, right. Lot of cowboy hats and spurs. Yeah. Saloons. Yeah. It's like the, the Texas of Australia. <laughs> right. <laughs> what is the Texas of Australia? Or the Texas of Canada, for that matter? Please, please, somebody from Australia, Australia, call the Yob line and just instruct us on Australia. I was going to say... We're obviously <laughs> lacking in knowledge. As these three white Americans are on this podcast today talking about... Everyone around the world, I'm sure we are mess. or I'll just speak for myself. I am messing up things as we go. So please call the Yob line, correct us. And we would love to hear from international listenership. I should mention standard calling rates apply or whatever, whatever the, whatever right. the it's, guideline is. <laughs> it'll be, it'll be worth it though. <laughs> yeah. It's worth it to hear your voice on this podcast forever. So worth it. Um, what I really, okay. So a few more things before we finish up our, our stats of 2021, um, our methods of how you listen to this podcast changed semi drastically this year because we added a whole bunch of new outlets for people to listen to the show. Um, and so I, I, I was curious how this, how this year compared to 2020, the previous year, um, 2020, our stats were right down the middle. 50% of our listenership came from Apple podcasts and then, the other 50% were across all the other all the other mediums that you can listen to podcasts. So a solid half coming through Apple. Um, this year, that is down to 34. So 34% of our listenership this year came via Apple Podcasts. And there's so many other ways that people are listening to. So shout out if you're on Spotify. Spotify is now 11% of our listenership. Um, 
Google, good old Google Chrome, people just listening straight from their browsers are 5%. Per- yes. 5%. Um, I guess they're at work, maybe not working as hard as they could. I don't know. They're listening via Google Chrome. Um, 4%. Shout out to our dear host, Podbean. We got 4% through Podbean and then 4% through my podcast app of choice, Overcast. So we have 4% represented there. And I always have to give a shout out when this conversation comes up to Stitcher. Shout out to Stitcher for being the number 12 most listened to method of listening to our podcast with less than 1% of our listens. So we love you, Stitcher. <laughs> Again, call the Yob line. If you're listening on Stitcher, I want to hear from you. What's the deal? What we're Tell us how you're enjoying the Stitcher experience. And then finally, you guys, I wanted to talk about our top 10 episodes of 2021. We had some great, this was the year of the guest. We had so many fantastic guests this year. Um, And we also talked about masturbation because masturbation was our number one listen to episode of 2021 but i wanted to give you guys a get um some another guessing game we had all these guests this year who do you think is responsible for getting us our number two most listened episode of 2021 of all the fantastic authors and pastors and people of noteworthy people far more illustrious than ourselves I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess Preston Sprinkle. Yeah, I would agree with that. You know what? It's not Preston Sprinkle. Preston Sprinkle was Ooh. our number six most listened to episode, though. So we give him credit really? for wow. that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Is it Brid- Bridget Eileen Rivera? No, and I think... Bridget, I think what what's going against Bridget Eileen is because she was such a recent Very guest. Recent. So she right. hasn't had the time. She hasn't had the history to accumulate the downloads, which it'd be interesting if she had come at the beginning of the year. Because um, we did get a good mm-hmm. amount of listens yeah. from her episode. But unfortunately... For this game, she she was just too late, too late in the game. I'm gonna I'm gonna just again, all the love goes back to to Aaron bringing in our Swedish listenership. Aaron, your beloved professor, Doctor Paul Eddy, is responsible for our number oh. two most listened to. All season. right, wow. let's go. Oh, I'm gonna have to tell him that. Please tell him. Please tell him, please tell him the number two most popular episode of 2021 belongs to him with Covenant Friendship. So. I we I mean I say it to every guest that we have that we would love to have you back, but the fact that the the numbers don't lie, we need to have Doctor Eddie back. Essentially, is what that means. But you have to also tell him he didn't quite edge out masturbation. I know, <laughs> right? We'll have to work on it. He could probably come speak on masturbation next oh, year. Talk oh, about? Can you imagine <laughs> the numbers? If we that's a slam dunk. <laughs> if we combine our number one and number two, yeah, that's that's a goldmine idea. So twenty twenty one, we'll. Uh, Masturbation, the sequel with Dr. Eddie. I'm sure he would be so thrilled. They're so honored. Um, to round out our top 10, to give you guys what we, yeah, what you guys loved and listened to this year. Number three was our Side B Objections episode. Number four, Love Languages and Sexuality. Number five, Belonging with Gregory Coles. Then we had six, Gender Identity with Preston Sprinkle. Number seven, Pride Month. Number eight, I'm going to come back to number eight. Number nine, church angst. And then number 10, men's fashion. So those were our top 10 episodes. Number eight, though, is so interesting to me that number eight, the number eight most popular podcast of 2021 was a podcast that released in 2020, which is unsurprisingly our gay sex and hookups episode. Apparently people love the flashy titles. (laughs) So, they just keep coming back for more. Down, I will say, down from number seven in 2020, it's number eight of 2021. So we'll see, Matt, if you're listening, we'll see if, you're, if your beloved episode can crack the top 10 next year. It's slipping. <laughs> so we'll see. So anyway, that rounds out our little stats game for 2021. Thank you to everyone who listened. I've already been noticing people posting their their hashtag Spotify wrapped um, and posting on their Insta stories that uh, that your other brother's podcast was among their top listens, if not their top listened podcast of the year. So so if that applies to you, if you have a, if you're into that whole Spotify wrap, this is the thing that inundates our social media for like two weeks at the end of every year. Um, if we cracked your top five, give us a tag at your other bros and we would love to just we just would love to celebrate this year with you. So thank you guys for listening and we're looking forward to 2022 coming soon. And before we talk about home for the holidays, question mark, uh, we need to thank our sponsor, which is by my knowledge, the only repeat sponsor we've ever had. And because it's our last episode of 2021, because it's the holidays, because it's particularly 
winter time and coming up on Christmas. Thank you to our perennial sponsor, Eggnog, for sponsoring this episode. Mm -hmm. Eggnog, Mm -hmm. the most bipolar, not bipolar, by, uh, what's the word? Polarizing. Polarizing. Thank you. Oh, yes. (laughs) The most polarizing drink that I can think of. Um, People either love it like me or think it's the worst thing you could ever put in your body, which is probably true, but it's not like I'm drinking it all year long. I mean, I probably would if I could, and I probably can if I want, Mm. (laughs) but I don't. (laughs) <laughs> um yeah so thank you eggnog um aaron i don't know if we've ever gone to you for your eggnog thoughts what are your eggnog thoughts no pressure i saw him grimace and gulp back saliva so i'm really curious to see i can tell i'm in the presence of, of people who really love it so i'll, I'll keep Aww, my tongue okay thank you <laughs> Yeah. Also, we got to show love. Again, these sponsors stick themselves out for us. So we got to show them some love. Even if you're not a huge fan, just say, I support the people who do support it. That's a good dem- democratic way to deal with it. Um, so thank you, Agnock. <laughs> just just for the record, I did not say that. I did not say that I support the people who, who support it. You don't support big Agnog? I do not. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's talk about our episode, you guys. Home for the Holidays. Uh, yeah, this is something that is becoming more of a consideration, I suppose, the older I get, because I, I've only spent, when I was thinking back on the, on the span of my life, I think I've only spent one Thanksgiving previous to this year with people, not my family. Um, so only one previous Friendsgiving, um, across 30 some years. And so it's not a common thing. Usually Thanksgiving, it's guaranteed. I'm going to be home. I'm home. I'm like Jonathan Taylor Thomas getting home for Christmas, whatever that movie was called. Um, But this year, this year I spent Friendsgiving with some friends. And then going back to last year because of COVID, I spent Christmas with friends as well. Small scale, small scale, small scale Christmas, um, which I just called Friendsmas, I guess. I don't know if there's a way to turn friends into Christmas, but we're going to roll with that. Um, And so I'm really curious about, yeah, y'all's experiences with spending holidays with people not your family and then moving forward as you get older is this something that you're thinking about like i am or am i just the only one in the room thinking about what my future holiday gatherings (laughs) will look like yeah this year i spent thanksgiving with friends and it's the third time in my life that i've done friendsgiving rather than like a family thanksgiving um and i I kind of feel like for me, doing every other year Friendsgiving is a pretty good pattern. Uh, I get to spend some Thanksgivings with friends, some with family. And in my opinion, Thanksgiving is like the best, the best holiday for, um, for just spending it with friends. I, I love mm-hmm. just being able to um, cook together and, um, and have a big meal together. It started... It kind of started when my sister got married and her family, well, her, her husband's family didn't live, uh, didn't live in the same area as U of M or us. And so my sister and her family would do every other holiday, like they'd spend Thanksgiving with the burgers and Christmas with his family and then switch like year, year after year. And so I sort of had had the situation where every other year it was um, like big family Thanksgiving and the off years were kind of smaller and, and it seemed fair to me to say, Hey, you know, if, if my sister spends every other holiday with somebody else, then it's also fair for me to look at spending Mm -hmm. every other holiday with somebody else. So I started doing that and that was a, yeah, that's been good. And I, I feel like my family's been very, um, very uh, understanding and mature about it and recognizing, yeah, like Ryan, like if Ryan chooses to spend a holiday with friends instead of us, it doesn't mean he doesn't love us. It doesn't mean anything except for that he has really good friends and that's great for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you, um, are you like aligning? So if you do the the rhythm of every other year with with family, like are you trying to align that with like whatever your sister's doing? If she's spending it with your family versus her in laws, or is that irrelevant? Yeah, yeah. In the past, it lined up really well, and it wasn't too hard to make it line up. But they, my sister's family, moved recently to be closer 
and they wound up closer to his family. And so now they're not really doing every other, like, cause they don't really have to choose anymore. I see. Um, and so now I'm more the one who's kind of, uh, behind, <laughs> behind the, the other. You're sure. the decision maker. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm the, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I think that, uh, yeah, so it would be, it'd be nice if it just work, worked out a little bit better, but um, there's not enough to stop me from going across the country for Thanksgiving this year. Yeah. Well, I like that. That's a good way to think about it, how your siblings with their in-laws or your brother, you know, sister, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's, it's really not a taboo idea, I guess, when I think about it from that perspective. Yeah. Is that something you've done, Aaron? Have you spent holidays thanksgiving i guess we're focusing on thanksgiving for the moment because i think yeah christmas is an interesting one that we'll get to i like how you said ryan that thanksgiving maybe is more conducive to to friendship so i'd like to to analyze the differences between thanksgiving and christmas Mm, with friends but i guess since we're looking backward we're looking at thanksgiving first yeah um what about you aaron have you spent thanksgiving with friends in the past or have you stuck with family or i should also say if you spend it by yourself i spent one thanksgiving by myself which I might share a story about that, but it was lovely. <laughs> but yeah, what about you, Aaron? Yeah, I, it's not something that I've done much of. Um, it's a newer idea to me with the pandemic, I think, because my family has generally had a really strong rhythm of getting together for holidays. And, um, you know, usually I would spend uh, the lunchtime on Thanksgiving with my dad and, and his side of the family on uh, stepmom and then I would go up to my mom's and stepdad's for dinner and stuff. So a lot of times I'm doing multiple family holidays on any given holiday. Um, with the pandemic, that kind of stopped happening with everybody shutting down and, you know, grandparents being more cautious, other people being cautious. But I, I've still always been with family, even if it's just been my mom or just been my brother. Um, sometimes I've had a couple friends join me for holidays with family, but I've never done it just with friends and not family. I see. So that begs the question then, Aaron, is this something that you are down to do in the future? Are you going to ride out this family train until you reach the end of the station? Well, that's just it, right? <laughs> Eventually my parents will die. <laughs> so, no, don't say that. Yeah. I'm hoping not for a long time. But, you know, some years my brother is with his in-laws. Um, so his wife is a native Swedish uh, person. So Shout out to her Sweden. family lives in Sweden. Yeah, exactly. More representation. Um, sometime we can interview her and try to continue to build that, mm-hmm. that relationship. <laughs> Building the but, uh, networking into Sweden. Right, exactly. But um, her family has been trying to come over and visit for a couple of years. And because of the pandemic, it keeps getting postponed. And so this year for Christmas, they're finally coming out for, uh, for the holiday. And so even though they're going to be here in Minnesota at their home, you know, 20 minutes away, they're going to have about a week or so where it's just her and him and the in-laws. And, you know, we're not going to be a part of that. And that's over Christmas. So we'll be kind of interesting to see what happens this year for Christmas. Um, cause with him being gone, it's kind of like, everybody decided, well, this is a weird year, so we can just sort of not do our normal routine of gathering. And we're already kind of out of practice because of a couple, you know, holidays with the pandemic. So I'm not quite sure. I think I might be, might be with friends or family or alone or with just my mom or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think Ryan, what you're saying about the every other year thing, like this year, with Thanksgiving, my, my brother got married this year. And so this was like the first line in the sand. Like, I think this is now a before and after moment that I think now that my, both my siblings, I have a brother and a sister. Now that they're both married, they both spent their Thanksgivings this year with their spouses, families. I, I was at a mm. crux in the road. I was at a decision point. Not that it wouldn't have been, not that, and I love my parents. If they're listening, I love you both. Um, I could have spent it alone with them and that would have been fine. I'm sure it would have been great. Um, But there was something like a whisper that was like, you know what, your your siblings get to spend every other year's because I'm sure that's probably their plan is every other year, they're just going to bounce back and forth between families, switching between like Thanksgiving and Christmas, I think generally. Um, Mm -hmm. So if they get to do that, why can't I just because I'm not married just because I don't have a spouse means I can't choose the people that I spend these holidays with. And it was just an opportunity. Mm -hmm. When I looked at looked around and I saw that there were friends where I live here in Asheville that weren't 
doing anything or that were available, like, why not? Why not have a Friendsgiving this year? And maybe next year I'll be back with my family. I guess that's the tentative plan. But um, it was very refreshing for me to feel like this could be a snapshot of the next 50 years that maybe every other year I spend Thanksgiving with friends in some capacity, um, whether it's where yeah, I am or whether I it's that. potentially traveling across the country like Homeboy did. <laughs> Like it could be that too. So I'm, I'm, I'm resistant to change and I'm a huge person of traditions and past and nostalgia. And so there's part of it that's mournful of like, oh, wow. Like I miss being just having all of us there every single year. Like there was something comforting, like I have a good family upbringing. And, and so there's something like a loss, I guess, is what I'm trying to hold with both hands. Like there's a loss of what has been, but, but then there's also this opportunity for new and new memories and new connections and new, um, just shared experiences that I think could be very, very nice as well. Yeah. And then you have a little bit of like cross pollination of traditions this year. I learned how mm. to make pie dough, uh, which I have oh. never, never managed to not play dough uh, do before pie, pie dough. dough. Yeah. What is that? Did you use it literally. Is it literally just scun- it's, uh, pie, <laughs> pie, pie crust? Like, okay. Oh, pie crust. Like sense? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think why I was confused is because I saw a TikTok recently where someone dismantled their pecan pie into little balls <laughs> and put them in the oven uh-huh. and like made cookies or something. It was very strange. And so for some reason, that was the image in my uh, head. Yeah. I was like t- thinking of you taking up already perfectly made pie and then just oh, yeah, breaking like it down. Destroying it. <laughs> Post- <laughs> post-processing the pie. But you're actually making the pie crust. Okay. That makes more sense. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And, and yeah, you get to like see how other people do it, like how uh, the dishes and the traditions other mm-hmm. people make happen. Yeah. And you can bring those back to your family. Yeah. I like that. I think, yeah, cross pollinating. I, I think I'd be interested in making that it, maybe not every other year or whatever, but having a little bit of a Friendsgiving. Cause like you said, that's probably a really easy holiday to do that with. Mm-hmm. And my family wouldn't mind so much Thanksgiving. I think it's harder with Christmas and Easter and things to not be together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that begs the question, is there a difference between celebrating Thanksgiving with friends and celebrating Christmas with friends? Because I will say last year, it was out of necessity with COVID, similar to what you were saying, Aaron, like like last Christmas, last winter, we were in a different place in the world as far as this pandemic and the the vaccine wasn't available yet for most people. And so, so it was a very safe, solitary Christmas for me last year. Um, I had a couple of friends here in town that we spent, we had dinner together that evening. And so it was, it was different. It was weird. It's not something I would want to do every single year, but for what it was, I was like, well, I've spent every Christmas of my life with family up until that point. And so it was kind of demoralizing in a sense, but it was also out of my hands. What am I going to do? I can't change the serenity prayer is huge. It's like, I can't change this circumstance that's in front of me. What can I, what can I change? And what I could change was, do I spend this day by myself in my little sad, Mm -hmm. which you guys know, I could be sad. I could just stay sad all day if I wanted to, but had this opportunity to hang out with two people. And it was a really just, it was nice. It was a really nice way to spend Christmas last year. And, and for this year, um, I'm going back to Pennsylvania where I grew up going back to spend time with family. So I'm really looking forward to getting back on track with that tradition, but I'm also cognizant of the fact that like, again, it's not lost on me. Yes. My family will start to die one day. If I don't die first, someone's going to die. Someone's going to leave or someone will retire to Florida or I don't know, like eventually my little happy familial upbringing in Pennsylvania isn't always going to be there anymore. And all these rich traditions I've established for 30 years aren't going to be there anymore. And and so that mm-hmm. feels catastrophic the more I dwell on it. But it's also, again, if I take a deep breath and realize there's opportunities then to cross pollinate, to try new things. And, and I don't know, it's a little weird. Christmas feels more personal to me. Do you guys feel like spending Christmas away from family? Does it, is it weird mentally to get around or is that, is that something that you're comfortable with? Cause I don't know, spending Christmas certainly with another person's family feels intrusive, but if I guess if it was just with friends, it wouldn't be too weird, but but I don't know. Christmas has always felt like a family tradition for me. So I think to me, Christmas or, or a lot of the activities around Christmas are very kid oriented. Uh, and so once you have like nieces and nephews, um, it, it does, I don't know. That, that's why spending Christmas away from my family is a little bit of a tougher sell right. for me. Right. Um, because I have gifts to give my nieces and my nephew and, um, like in, in Christmas morning is a big thing with kids, right? And 
um, you know, you make the Christmas cookies, you decorate the Christmas cookies and you read the Christmas stories, read how the Grinch stole Christmas. And, um, yeah, so that's why to me, Thanksgiving feels like more of a, more, more open to converting it to friends. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Right. And I would say that for me too, Thanksgiving has always been a time when we've opened our holiday up to everyone and anyone. Like we've had a lot of family friends, different years come mm-hmm. over. We've had other friends come and be a part of it. And that hasn't really been the case so much with Christmas, usually because other people are doing things, not because we're not, you know, interested in other people being part of it. But I do think there's stronger family traditions steeped in Christmas and it's, it's, um, you know, spiritual as well and faith based. And like a lot of the church does kind of message things from the lens of family and nuclear family in particular. Um, so we've done a lot of those sorts of classic Christmas spiritual things as well as a nuclear family. And that's just what I'm very used to at this point. I think it would feel, I don't think I'd feel bad being with friends. I think I would enjoy that a lot, but it would feel kind of different and a little bit melancholy, just not being with family. Yeah. And I'm thinking, cause all of us have at least one niece, nephew in the mix, right? Like we're all uncles, we're all funkles or gunkles. whatever you want to call us um so we have that going for us i also know there's a large portion of our i don't know how large but there's probably a decent number of people listening who don't have that who don't have nieces or nephews or little cousins running around Mm -hmm. or something and so maybe that um i almost wish we had somebody on the podcast today who was in that position because i'd be curious for their thoughts on like um yeah because you're right ryan christmas Christmas, the magic of Christmas kind of got lost many years ago as far as like seeing a mountain of presents under a tree. Like that's not the case anymore. I was joking on the last podcast Mm -hmm. that it was a transition from like big boxes, big colorful boxes to to a bunch of envelopes because then all of our family members just gave us gift cards for like our teenage selves because they didn't know what to get us. And then to nothing to nothing at all. And so it's just like this transition of like the tangible magic of Christmas kind of all disintegrated you know, a decade and a half ago for me, but, um, but there is something special now that I have a couple, a couple nieces and who knows who else may be on the way in the years to come. Like, um, you're right. I think there is something magical about that to, to press into that. If you, if you're blessed to have that in your life, but, but then I wonder, yeah, for people who are walking this road that we're walking and who don't have that, um, that's that strong, or maybe they're just disconnected because we certainly have plenty of people and they're like, in our listenership who aren't c- close with their mm-hmm. families either. And so, um, so I'm definitely curious as we all, as we all get older beyond our twenties, thirties, forties, wherever, wherever we are, I'm curious if more and more people will spend within our community, will spend holidays together in particular Christmas. Mm-hmm. I guess, um, like, I think it's interesting to talk about maybe we don't have to go way into this, but like for me, New Year's Eve has been a holiday. I've more often spent with friends and family mm-hmm. and, um that that's been really good i think having and it, that's been accepted by my family and kind of encouraged like it's expected that i'll go hang out with all of my friends on new year's eve rather than necessarily just being with family um and there have been times when i've been just with one friend and times when i've had a huge gathering or been to other people's parties and they all kind of have their own special feel i think as i've gotten older and stayed single like there's a certain sadness that comes with New Year's Eve because it kind of feels a little bit like, especially if you're in a smaller group, it feels more driven by romance, like that special New Year's Eve, bringing in the New Year's with your special someone. But, mm-hmm. um, but I've really, yeah, I've enjoyed it. And the other thing, so I have had one holiday completely by myself, and that was Easter. I think, I don't know if that was when everything first shut down or if that was this past spring. I can't remember, but. Um, it was actually really nice. I will say that sometimes I have enjoyed holidays alone and I don't think I'd feel as content if it were a Christmas alone or, or even like a New Year's Eve alone. I think I'd just kind of sit and stew on my aloneness and sorrow, but, um, something like Easter where it was really, I just, I love Easter. I think it's my favorite holiday. I love the stark contrast trust of Good Friday just being dark and hard and difficult and very, um, I don't know, familiar and relatable. And then the joy and the hope that comes from Sunday. And so spending those two alone 
was kind of a cool opportunity for me to really sit and reflect as an individual on my faith, less in a corporate setting, whereas normally I've always celebrated the death and resurrection in a corporate setting, which I think is great and I'd love to continue to do, but I, I did find a lot of value in being alone. Yeah, I referenced earlier that I spent one Thanksgiving alone and it was back when I was living, I was living in California for a few years in my mid 20s. And, and rather than fly home, or I had some actually some family in Southern California that I could have spent with, but, um, but there was an opportunity I saw, I don't know where I heard about it on Facebook or somewhere online. I heard that there was like, um, some sort of drive for the homeless in Los Angeles. And I was like, you know what, that could be a cool way to get out of myself. I'm always looking sometimes more feverishly than others, looking for ways to get beyond myself. Um, and so I was like, I could spend it by myself and just, you know, hunker down and just be solitary and whatever. But, um, I took an opportunity like to go to downtown LA, pack some care packages for the homeless. And then, and then have the whole rest of the afternoon where I like went to the Griffith observatory. I hiked to the Hollywood sign for the first time. And it was like, it was just a great little personal day to be grateful and to be thankful. Um, knowing that probably Mm -hmm. most years I'm going to have places I can go, um, and just being able to take an opportunity during, because sometimes during the holidays, I don't know if you guys relate with this. Sometimes I'm just so exhausted by the peopleness. Like I'm grateful. This is a good problem mm-hmm. to have. Like, oh mm-hmm. my gosh, I have so many people who love me, and I just want you to all go away and leave me by myself. But, but, um, mm-hmm. but it's an opportunity also to just like practice practice the the art of solitude and just to to be grateful and to. It was just an awesome time to be able to for that particular Thanksgiving to be able to do both to be able to to serve people, but then also to take care of myself and just not have to deal with the the craziness that can sometimes come with family gatherings of 10 plus people or however many people are under one roof. So, mm-hmm. um, so I'm a big fan of holidays alone. And then I also spent, um, I don't do this anymore because I'm not an Uber Lyft driver anymore post COVID, but I used to, and this was such a highlight of my New Year's Eve is I would drive people around on New Year's Eve because it's the most lucrative day to do that. So for financial reasons, it's fun to drive around and the rates are amazing and people are mm-hmm. generally tipping well and in good spirits. And so it's kind of just mm-hmm. a fun atmosphere. But um, but these last couple of New Year's then I've spent by myself. And so there's been a, a stark contrast of it's different from driving around and having something to do and places to go. And I guess you're with people, but then they exit your vehicle after five minutes. And so you're not really with them. But um, But I think spending New Year's Eve, New Year's with friends, I think that's something that I would love to get back on track in my in my life. Cause I think that's a fun, it's a fun way to ring in the ear, but then you're also right, Aaron, that it can be, it's that, 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 and like Valentine's day, I guess, are like two holidays that stand out as mm-hmm. far as like, who's next to you, who are you going to kiss or who are you going <laughs> to oh, yeah. Yeah. share this moment with, you know? You know, this past year I had a, a Palentine's weekend with, uh, with some friends. Nice. That's right. Charlotte. Yeah. And, um, and I'm, I'm a big fan of that idea. Like, um, it's so easy to feel lonely on Valentine's Day, but you can sort of, you can, you can divert that pretty easily to friends. Like no one, you know, no one's parents are upset when you don't spend Valentine's Day with them. Right. Like, yeah. And shout out again to you, Ryan, for you first became a Yob patron on Valentine's Day. You're steeped. <laughs> Guess I was just look, looking for something, you know? This Aww. is, yeah, the, this is the day for you when we get there. We'll get to Valentine's Day in a couple of months we'll do maybe we'll, we'll reference that in the episode but yeah yeah P- Valentine's day i like that yeah i think tommy also hit on something important where one criteria for success for a holiday is rest right and i think a lot of what well, most of our listeners i would guess you know we uh, w- would say we love our families a lot um and spending time with them is good but because for various reasons, like it's not always exactly restful. And I think that if you choose the right friends, doing holidays with them can be restful and restorative in a certain way that family isn't always um, for some people. And also spending a holiday alone in solitude can be very restful, yeah. like as you've described. And so I think people kind of trying to decide what to do with their holidays I would encourage you to think about, you know, what's going to be restful, what's going to be restorative to me. Yeah. It's so easy to fall into the trap of what you should do for Christmas. Like, oh, I have a family and they want me to be there, so I should go or I have to go. Um, 
or to feel like, yeah, whatever the culture says that you should have a significant other to kiss on New Year's Eve or whatever the rules, quote unquote, are of our culture. Like it's so easy to get down mm-hmm. if you don't have that mm-hmm. or if you don't plug into that. But but it's totally fine. Again, I've spent holidays. There's some holidays that I wish I did spend with people that I spent alone, but there are times where it's like completely, completely good, completely good. I like how you said that. I think a holiday, my goodness, if a holiday isn't restful, what is the point? <laughs> like people who are stressed out yeah. over the turkey, <laughs> by the way, Side tangent, no turkey this year for Thanksgiving. And I was such a fan. I was like, thank God I didn't have to be the person nice. thawing the turkey for a week or whatever insane like preparation comes with the butterball. Like, uh-huh. I'm so glad that was not part of my Friendsgiving duties and everyone was cool with that. So mm. no, no turkey this year. And it was great. And I encourage anyone who stresses out about the turkey, let it go. It's not that great. <laughs> let go of the turkey. <laughs> I was thinking as we go back to Christmas, though, I maybe close the conversation. I was thinking um, because I've spent every Christmas of my life sans last year um, up in Pennsylvania where I grew up. And what that means is I will usually travel up there a few days, if not a a week or this year, almost like two weeks in advance going up there, Um, which is fun and great. And I love I have a grandma who I love and lots of aunts and uncles and some cousins and even a what is it like a second cousin or a cousin once removed, whatever that genealogy is. I'm not sure what, what this little boy is in relation to me. He's something Um, he's like a year old now. And so, so I have this like awesome little family up there that I love seeing, but, but what I've become more conscious about the more I get plugged into, to Asheville and particular with my church here in Asheville is that I've never spent, like they always have a Christmas Eve service. I've never been to that. Um, I've never like participated in the functions that surround Christmas because I'm always not here And so there is something that's in my head now Mm -hmm. that I kind of wish wasn't there, but it's like stubbornly there now where it's like, what would it be like in the future, whether it's with this church in this city, or if I ever move somewhere else or wherever I am for the next 50 years, like, what would it be like to not go with family to certainly up to Pennsylvania, but even like to the rest of my immediate family? What if I was more focused on my church? What if I went to a Christmas Eve service, which I haven't been to in decades? Like, Mm -hmm. I don't even know. It's like, it's hard to wrap my mind around, but um, is that something I should be more mm. conscious of with future planning because my family isn't going to be forever or certain people won't be around forever? Um, and what do I do with that? Because I don't know, it's it's um, it's just something I'm thinking about more as I enter my mid thirties, like how do I want to spend these special days and with whom and where? Um, and it's something I'm thinking about more the older I get. Mm. Do you guys do that? Do you spend like Christmas Eve services with your churches or feel a sense of local connection outside of your families? You know, my church has always had very beautiful Advent services and Christmas services. And I've always been really sad when I miss those to, uh, to be with my family. And, and in fact, in the past, before my sister had kids, I would like drag my family once or twice from Greensboro to Raleigh. That's an hour and a half each way. Whoa. To, like, <laughs> no, we we're going to my church. <laughs> like, <laughs> you guys are coming. Wow. Over. Um, and they were, they were down, um, it worked out pretty well. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, now it's, it's harder with, with the nieces and the nephew and, um, and I'm a little sad about that. I think as I, I think it's a function of how connected I am at the moment with my local church community. You know, it is, um, Right. The more connected I am with them, the more, the more I feel a desire to to spend those services with them next to them. Um, but truth be told, a lot of them have little kids. A lot of them have families out of state, and it's kind of a toss up about you know if I go, if I make it a priority to show up at the Christmas Eve service, uh, like I, I don't know if anyone I know is going to be there, you know, mm-hmm. because they all. They're, they're also actually facing the same questions about who and where am I going to spend Christmas um, with and uh, and they don't you know they don't always prioritize the same things that I do year in and year out. Yeah, I imagine it's a weird vibe when you're at a Christmas Eve service. Again, I haven't been to one in so many years, but I imagine it's a mixed bag of like who's even still in town, who's here, who's here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For and for me it's always been really positive. Um I love the candlelight service and singing the hymns and it's just it feels like part of Christmas. Do you hold those Eve. little candles where the wax drips on your 
hand and you have to like yes you know, with a little paper <laughs> right yeah. Yeah. over yeah. many years my church has tried many different <laughs> ways to contain the wax do they put plastic to varying degrees of plastic success. on the carpet so we can protect the carpet from the wax that's dripping from everybody's candles they really should what they finally started doing is you place the candle inside of like a cup wax holder um, thing so there is no little crack for it to drip through yeah. but it drips all the way to the bottom of the candle brilliant right it just makes a lot of sense i have never had a problem with wax at a candlelight service never this is like i'm i'm yeah wow. never felt that scalding sensation <laughs> yeah the burning feeling of the spirit dripping down which honestly i kind of like i like how it it hurts so good <laughs> Just, of just course hurts you bit. do, yeah. Tom. Of course you do. Because <laughs> it's not like a serious burn or anything. It'll hurt for a second, but then it like hardens on your skin, and I love that sensation. It's so great. Uh, just like just like suffering, <laughs> right? It's refining for a moment. Exactly. And exactly. Then you're mm -hmm. refined. Yeah. Refining yeah. wax. Yeah, but so my family has always gone to Christmas Eve services because um, the. Swedish tradition, which is where my dad's mom comes from, which is, you know, basically is always to celebrate on Christmas Eve. So we would always celebrate with our family on Christmas Eve with my dad's side. And then as part of that, as like a family, we would go to the church um, and do a Christmas Eve service. So that's always been something that I've done with my family and kind of as part of the celebration. And we'd go at like four and then we'd come back and eat a bunch of food and then start to open gifts and eat more food and open more gifts. So um, enjoyed it. And it wasn't really my local church anyway that I was necessarily going to on Sundays. So it was more about the service and the spiritual side of it and the family that I was with than seeing other people that I knew at the service. Yeah. So I guess to close out, what are your guys' feelings just going into this particular Christmas? Are you feeling good? Are you in high spirits? Is there, are you like me? I know, Aaron, you're still young. You're still, you're still youthful. So maybe, maybe you have more optimism. Maybe Ryan does too, for that matter. But what do you guys feel about, um, yeah, in particular this, in this, this holiday season? Because for me, this, again, this was a, a transitory year for me because I, I saw my brother get married. So he has a wife now. And my sister's been married for a few years, has two kids of her own. Um, and so I'm not spending it with my immediate family. But I imagine if I would, there would be a sense of inclusiveness because they're very inclusive. It's not like Tom is the estranged uncle or anything. Like I'm very included and I'm grateful for that. But but just on paper, when you look at it, like, um, like yeah, there's this couple here, this couple here, and then my parents. And so then there's just kind of me floating, floating on an island. And so there is like a... If I dwell on it, like, sure, it can get sad or it can get isolating. Um, and I have that more more on my mind, I guess, than any other Christmas season, um, just because of the way my family has shifted this year. But I'm curious how y'all's, what are, what are y'all's mental states or emotions um, going into either this Christmas or just the concept of family holiday gatherings moving forward, since I know you have siblings who are also also married and with kids. So this year is interesting because we're celebrating Christmas at my sister's house in near Atlanta, but uh, my mom, who's a nurse, has to work on Christmas Eve and Christmas uh, in Greensboro. And so um, they'll actually be leaving my mom and my dad. Um, sounds like they'll be leaving on the 23rd. And so they'll actually kind of, you know, the tables have turned. Um, they're missing Christmas this year instead of me. Um, and yeah, I think the my state of mind going into like family holidays is always like, okay, how am I going to structure this so that I am happy, I guess, or how am I going to structure this so that I have as much like alone time as I need, as much rest as I need? Because if I don't sort of like plan that ahead of time and structure it ahead of time, like I'm going to be at everyone's throats by like day two. And then it's not going to be fun for me or anyone. And and it just like, it all works so much better if I have an idea ahead of time. Okay, on the 23rd, I'm going to spend spend the morning at Panera or something and have, have like some planned out time to withdraw. Shout out to Panera, future sponsor of the show. We love you, Panera. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think for myself, um, like I said, my... My sister-in-law's family 
family is coming from Sweden this year. So they're going to be kind of off doing their own thing Christmas Eve, Christmas, quite a bit of the time. And what I think what's hard for me and what I'm realizing is when the pandemic started, it threw everything off, all the rhythms and traditions and things that were happening. And I just sort of assumed, well, eventually we'll get through this and things will go back to how they were. And what I'm realizing is that now as things return to some form of functional normalcy, like a lot of a lot of things that were eventually going to have to stop happening, either from family passing away or getting married or moving or whatever it was, just got sped up by the pandemic. And so there's a lot of things that I think have shifted permanently that happened kind of abruptly and out of the blue. So I'm a little bit down on that, but I'm also a high introvert who enjoys a lot of alone time. So in some sense, like just having a bunch of days off and having a really low key holiday is very okay with me. Um, I don't think I'd want that every year, but if it's like every couple of years, I'm in a small group, just more on my own. I think I'd be okay with that. When you say low key holiday, are you talking about the Marvel show or are you talking about by yourself <laughs> or both maybe? <laughs> I mean, certainly I enjoyed the show, Loki. Yeah. Um, so if it's out, it may help keep me company. A Loki, Loki. Yes, yeah, be, being in a small group. A Loki, right, Loki. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. I think I think that's where I'm at mentally to, to when I think about the rest of my life. Um, like, sure, if I have family and, and certainly if I have friends, like I want to spend a bulk of those holidays with them um, and embrace the gifts that I've been given. But I think if a Thanksgiving rolls around one year and I'm just not feeling it and I'm just wanting the space, would prefer the space and that would be more restful than, than just having a bunch of people around than just leaning into that and taking care, taking care of myself, practicing self-care with the holidays. Cause, cause again, that's such a tragedy when people get so stressed out over Christmas or over shopping or over cooking or over whatever people get stressed out about or seeing their estranged family members that they have awful conversations with around the dinner table you know it's like i would want to surround myself with peace love joy and if that means by myself one year mm -hmm. then i want to be able to step into that but um but i don't know i hope i hope people listening because i know again i know there are people listening who don't have strong families or feel that isolation um if they're an only child or whatever the situation is um i hope there's opportunities for you to be able to be connected on christmas or Certainly, other holidays as well, but with Christmas coming up, I hope there's an opportunity to to spend it alone, to spend it with people, or if if that's more restful, to spend it alone, to not feel any shame over that. Because I think I think that can be a beautiful thing um, that we practice self care instead of willingly enter into arenas that are going to either stress us out or demoralize us. Um, that it's okay, it's okay to to be alone this year if that's if that's what's right for you. Mm -hmm. A year ago on this podcast, I read all the lyrics to my favorite Christmas hymn of all time, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. It speaks to this longing that I feel as a Jesus follower, as a Jesus follower attracted to the same sex and sacrificing a large part of myself daily, or attempting to daily. I feel that longing for God to come make all things right once and for all. I won't reread all the lyrics again this year, but one verse stands out when we think of this sense of home, when we try to define it, when we try to even imagine what home could look like beyond everything that we've been ingrained to think home looks like from our one dimensional perspective, be it four walls or a picket fence or a golden retriever, two siblings, a mom and a dad. All those things are great. Some of us have pretty good homes, great, homes even, and some of us, not so much. 
And some of us, even with those great homes, still look around, look up to the heavens and wonder, there has to be more, surely. Surely there exists another home, far greater than anything I could imagine. A place with no more tears, a place of joy, a place of rest. A place beyond viruses and conflicts, a place beyond death and separation. And during those times of longing, Christmas season or otherwise, I cling to the hope of this verse from that sacred hymn. O come, thou key of David, come, and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that leads on high, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. And so, fellow sparrows, wherever you spend this Christmas and this turning of the new year, the sacred season of looking back, looking forward, and looking left and right around you. May you experience a sense of family, a sense of home beyond mere human structures, that this family of God grows real to you in this season, realer even than the blood you share across one or two generations, a spiritual kinship that spans ages and nations, Near or far from physical family this year, may you draw ever nearer to Jesus, our brother, our savior, our collective key, and to our other brothers and sisters and spiritual siblings, his church. May God soon and very soon turn the key and open wide the gates to our heavenly home. And until that day, May God keep you safe on this way. May God keep you healthy. May God keep you strong. And may God lead us home. One of the nice things about holidays is you they, they kind of happen every year and, and so you get this chance to try out different things every year and um and there's always gonna be another 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 holiday, another Christmas, another Thanksgiving with more options. And I don't think anyone should feel any pressure this year to like get it right or hit it out of the park or get exactly what you're um what you're what you're wanting or looking for. Um yeah, there's there's always next year. Yeah. Who knows? You guys think about this like next year you might make a friend. You probably will. You'll make a friend that you don't even know exists right now. And maybe you'll mm-hmm. spend Thanksgiving with them. <laughs> or Christmas yeah. or mm-hmm. I don't know. There's all kinds of things. Certainly within Yab, we're getting new patrons by the day, by the week, certainly by the month. And so mm-hmm. there'll be certainly be members of our community for those that are in our Yabbers community that are in our community this time next year that aren't there now. And maybe y'all will connect and become friends and and maybe you'll spend friends giving together next year. So everything yeah. changes. It's it's yeah. Don't feel like you have to lock yourself into a, a holiday rhythm now. Like it could change every single year. Mm-hmm. We want to hear from you guys. What are you doing? What are you doing for Christmas, for new year's, for these holidays coming up? Um, Go over to our podcast episode page, yourotherbrothers.com slash podcast. Find the episode 89 post on Home for the Holidays and tell us what you're doing and tell us kind of if you're starting to future cast, if you're trying to plan or if you're thinking about future holidays or if you want to reference past holiday experiences with friends or family or by yourself, um, tell us a story. Tell us what you're thinking, what you're feeling as you navigate this season. And don't be a stranger. Leave us some comments and know that we're here for you. We're with you and um, we're celebrating this holiday season, this Christmas with all of you. So 
leave a comment. We would love to hear from you guys and give us a call in the Yelp line as well. We would love to hear from you that way as well. I'm not going to like guilt trip anyone because I truly expect nothing. So I'm just, I'm just purely remembering last Christmas, but I spent it by myself and I have to give our Yabbers community a shout out because I got something like 25 or 30 calls to the Yab line on Christmas mm-hmm. day. Cause I was like, it rang, a, I saw, I get these little notifications. So I saw it happen twice in the morning. I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm sure someone's, I didn't listen to them right away. I'm sure someone's calling and just wishing me Merry Christmas. And then it would happen like every hour on the hour, every half hour on the, on the half hour. And people were so sweet and those are forever saved in my, <laughs> my archive of the, the Yab, Yab line messages that people have left over the years. So special shout out to all you fine, beautiful people who did that a year ago. It's, um, not lost on me because I think I made it known that I was going to be spending Christmas without family that year. And so people were just super kind to, to reach out. So, so thank you guys. Love all of you in this wonderful, wonderful world of Yab. And thank you, Eggnog. We love you so much. This podcast crew supports you a hundred percent. We love you. So thank you, Eggnog (laughs) for fueling this episode Um, We look forward to your sponsorship a year from now, as always. Something faithful and true through the years. Eggnog. Our only repeat sponsor, everybody. We love eggnog. Yes, we do. Thank you, Aaron and Ryan. Thanks for coming today from your little Minnesota time together. I'm so honored that you decided to spend some of it with me. It was so fun. Yeah, it's been great. I hope you enjoy, yeah, whatever board games or other adventures you get into. The rest of your time together mm-hmm. and happy new year to you too and to everyone listening we'll be back on the yes. other side of this year 2021 was better than 2020 so let's hope 2022 is better than 2021 right <laughs> right amen and amen we're, we're we're out of options on the downward side so <laughs> oh, okay. okay careful you heard it here folks from ryan we can't get any worse so let's <laughs> Let's go. Um, yeah. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and we'll be back soon with another Yobcast combo cast. Um, but for now, for all your other brothers, this is Tom. This is Ryan, and I'm Aaron. Reminding you that you are not alone. Even the sparrow finds a home. See you next year, everybody. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. everyone. Thanks for listening to Your Other Brothers Podcast. Our show is edited and produced by Thomas Mark Zuniga. If you enjoy our show, consider rating and reviewing us on Apple Podcasts. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Your Other Bros. We'd love to hear your story. Comment on this or any of our episodes at yourotherbrothers.com slash podcast. Or share a story to play back on our show by calling us at 706-389-8009. You can also email us at podcast at yourotherbrothers.com or write to us at Your Other Brothers, P.O. Box 843, Asheville, North Carolina, 28802. Finally, if you'd like to further support our storytelling, community building efforts, consider becoming a Yabber. Yabbers pledge monthly on Patreon and receive perks like bonus podcast content, access to a secret Facebook group, regular group calls with fellow patrons and authors, and more. Visit patreon.com slash your other bros for more information. Until we journey next time, we're glad you're with us.